a speeding bullet. If you only knew the power of the dark side. Has it been a long time since Chuckle's Crypt has gone live here on RhodeIslandFreeRadio.org? And we started things off with a celebration from Vita, the seventh element. That goes out to my number one fan out there, my newly born daughter, Lydia. Uh, someone posted this up on my, my Facebook page as a joke from, uh, I'd say, uh, Scary Acres, a haunt that I worked at over uh, the fall time, and uh, they thought it was a funny song, and it is, but it's also a very entertaining song, and the gentleman, Vita, I guess you would say he was uh, Russia's version of Elton John, huh. uh, and he's got a heck of a character, and 
a multi um, genre of voices that he can do from this to opera and some of his opera songs, Mr. Jones, sounding like uh, sounding like a female in some of these notes oh. here. Uh, I'd like to thank today coming in for uh, George Garner, Slappy. Slappy, welcome to Chuckles. Crip. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to talk all things today, but uh, not, sh- not to be postponed. Uh, Comic Con, of course, Survivor Series, and some really cool turtle stuff that I think needs to be mentioned. Yes, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, not Turtle. The Steve Weiner. Uh, as much as I'd like to talk about Steve Weiner, Did you bring any pantyhose? Yeah, we we can't bring up the pantyhose subject on this. <laughs> Kids just won't get it, and this is primarily meant for the children and the guys that are in there that have never grown up from being children. Me? Yeah, you. Me. Uh, yeah, Joe and the other guy in the room over there, Lenny, who's uh, just sitting there and well, he's just sitting there enjoying himself. <laughs> yeah. Taking up precious oxygen, thinking about Thanksgiving dinner, which is coming up shortly. And uh, I wonder, are we doing our Thanksgiving Eve special? Well, you know, um, I was planning on doing it, and the people that I had uh, on tap had plans, so I was thinking about not doing it. And now I'm thinking about redoing it again, because the reason the Thanksgiving Eve broadcast started was... I would decide to get in the way of the Thanksgiving meal being prepared. So I was told to get out of the house. And that's how I decided, you know, we'll do a live broadcast. So, uh, you know, I think we might have to uh, get all the men out of the house while the ladies are cooking and and do a live broadcast. Yeah, you got two of us right here. I mean, we don't have anything to do. The asylum will let us out. (laughs) Now, a lot of folks out home are saying, why, Chuckles? Why did it take you two months to come back to the airway? Almost two months. There's this thing called life. Let me just tell you this, boys and ghouls. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> There's no positive way of spinning it. I mean, I know you guys out there are sitting there saying, oh, no, Donald Trump's president. My life's going to suck. Let me tell you something. Your life's going to suck no matter what president's in office. Exactly. It's just how are you going to spin the bottle? I spun the bottle, had a, uh, a miniature heart attack. Today, trying to get down the ye old Christmas stuff, fell off the ladder. Nice. Hanging from the freaking stalks up in the balcony. It's like Home Alone. Y- you know something, though, Mr. Jones? If I didn't know how to do a break fall from yeah. wrestling, I probably wouldn't be speaking to you guys right now because I went right into break fall mode, closed my eyes, and went, oh, cr-, before I could get the last of it out. I'm getting bad, bad pictures. Yeah, it hurt. It hurt very bad. Now, if we had Lenny there, I could have used him as a bouncing trampoline, Aww. and I would have been all set. Lenny, don't look at me with that baseball bat like that. Uncalled for. So, yeah, life happens, therefore the radio station didn't happen, and I apologize. And uh, we're going to try to do this on an every other week basis to keep myself from going nuts. Uh, I think every week's a little too much for me having a new little one at home and everything, but I still want to bring the radio, live radio, and the competition to Rhode Island Free Radio.org. Which, by the way, when we were at Comic Con, there wasn't too many other radio stations they were talking about when they came up to my table. There was a lot of nerds that were dying to come into Chuckles Crypt. Now, before we go on to the next song, uh, our good friend here, Slappy, we have an event coming up, and I'm going to say this early on in the show, and we'll probably do it later on. Slappy, what do we have coming up uh, December 3rd? Well, December 3rd, we got a Toys for Tots event, 2 Legion Way in West Warwick, Rhode Island. For you people that know, it's the... Legion post right behind the West Warwick Police Department. <laughs> yes, and that is to bring an unwrapped new toy. Now, everybody out there is thinking you have to buy the most expensive toy to do this. No, you do not. The Dollar Store, Family Dollar, and Five and Below have some really cool toys. So if you could get yourself away from the couch, sacrifice a pack of cigarettes, that six-pack of beer, go get yourself a toy, bring it down, drop it off, and we're going to enter you guys in a raffle to win a whole uh, Series 1 and the first two from Series 2 DVD collection set from the Chuckles Crypt. Uh, So come down, drop off a toy, and, uh, yeah, get entered in the raffle. We're going to go down to something. uh, I got a little new feeling today about some of this. I took some local and some international uh, locally sung stars. And these guys, I, I think they're really cool. And I think uh, Chuckles Crip's going to love this too. This is called Two Cellos, and it's Thunderstruck, a cover of an ACDC song. <laughs> Thank you. 
What did you think of that, Joe? Two cellos. They had a drum in the background, but only two cellos to pull off that instrumental of ACDC's Thunderstruck. That was the first time I've ever heard it. Yeah, a lot of these songs are going to play for you guys. People haven't heard or they're international sensations. Like the next one coming up, I'm pretty sure that 99% of the people that that watch YouTube or on the internet have heard this song, but not the extended version. They've only heard the 54 uh, second version of that. But let's go back to the, the, the thing at hand. Uh, welcome back. This is Chuck was Crypt, and we are on Rhode Island Free Radio.org live, or as some people would say, dead. <laughs> um, we're going to go back and we're going to talk about Comic Con. What an event it was. I know a lot of people give that place hatred and everything, but it wasn't the cluster that it's been in years. Uh, they had to control the traffic down. I think. Personally, they had too many celebrities, uh, Tony. I think it was like close to 70 celebrities there. And I think that's one too many. I think you should get a couple big ones and maybe a couple minor ones. But 70, that's just covering your ass. Yeah, I split the weekend between Friday and, and Sunday. and But I saw some of the Facebook Lives and the different streaming stuff from Saturday. And judging on the crowd, and I don't really fear crowds, uh, I'm kind of glad I stayed home on Saturday. It looked like it was really nut to butt in there. It was bad, but like years prior, remember the sea of people that would go by the tables and we couldn't get out yeah. even to go to the bathroom? And they would lock the building out, lock you out when you went out to go to the bathroom. Now, they were on when I got there really early on Friday. We had some press junkets and stuff, and uh, they were confiscating bats when people came in the door on Friday, and people were getting pissed. It's like, well, you can see both sides of it. You know, people want to have their bats autographed. However, uh, you're letting a bunch of people bring bats into a, a large public space. <laughs> and, and if you guys are out there wondering why are the bats, if you haven't seen The Walking Dead, I'm going to ruin it for you. This <laughs> guy called Negan comes in with a baseball bat, and he turns Glenn and the, the redheaded gentleman's head into uh, basically smashing pumpkins. Then all the Harley Quinns had bats, too. Oh, man, so many Harley Quinns. And uh, male, like, female, uh, black, white. Yeah, every that, every Harley, Qu Harley Quinn you could want, they were there. It that was, was there. weird. The female, I mean, the male Harley Quinns. I mean, I'm <laughs> all for, like, equal opportunity and switching the characters around, but something about that. It just, it, it didn't do anything for me. I looked at it and said, is that a dude? In a Harley Quinn outfit. <laughs> and I mean, not just, you know, the shorts. He's actually wearing a dress. I don't want to see that Harley Quinn's bat. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, something, this is something where if we had done this like 10 years ago, we would have gotten our asses kicked the minute we walked into the Civic Center. Never mind the Civic Center. In the garage before we got into the <laughs> Civic Center. Someone would have beat us up with our own bat exactly. on top of it. Now, I'm all for equal opportunity, but I, I bring this up again for, the, for those out there that are cosplaying. If you are cosplaying a character, please, uh, I beg on my mother's grave, try to stay at least semi-close to what that character would look <laughs> like. Because there's young people and people like myself that we look upon those characters in a certain way, almost like they are godly. <laughs> and when you come across looking the way you do, that character loses about 4 to 5% respectability for myself. So don't do it. And I did see Fat Flash show up, <laughs> by the way. Was and, he wearing his sweatpants? <laughs> uh, he wasn't in any gear that I know. Actually, yes, he was Fat Negan. Uh, he had the baseball bat. That was the other thing. So many people with weird baseball bats. They had some that were wrapped in, like, pipe cleaners and glitter <laughs> strings and everything. Uh, the girl Negan going by was like, what? <laughs> I think the, the best cosplay I saw was the Asian dude walking by dressed like Glenn. And he had his eye all squished out and everything. <laughs> I said, man, you got some balls walking around like that. That is incredibly cool. Uh, that was one of my favorite costumes. Uh, someone showed up in an, uh, was it, uh, I'm trying to remember, the full Actimus uh, outfit, the, the night suit where he's a ghost and everything. That was really cool. But otherwise, it was 99 uh, Deadpools and another 99 yep. Harley Quinns and... 75% uh, Negans. Mm -hmm. uh, so there wasn't too much originality in a these costumes. A few wrestlers thrown in. I saw a few Dusty Rhodes and Randy Savages throughout the day. I didn't see those. However, I did see the original Ric Flair, which, by the way, everybody out there, you guys are entitled to your own opinions. And you know, automatically, someone if you get a, a bad attitude off one of the wrestlers, you label them being a jerk. <laughs> They're human like you and I. They could have been rubbed the wrong way when right. they got off the airplane or dealing with the Comic-Con status, which I deal with that every time. 
and it really didn't make him too happy. And you're over there asking him like really stupid questions, not stuff that like a fan would ask, but stupid stuff like, yeah, how do you like the weather? And the guy's <laughs> sitting there looking at you like, I don't like the weather. I'm Ric Flair. I'm from the Carolinas. <laughs> this sucks. But no, I, I went by him and gave him the typical wrestling language because we just got out of line meeting Alice Cooper. Yes, hail to the God. Tony Jones, it has been 16 plus years that Did I've been trying to go out for a round of golf afterwards. I wanted to. <laughs> I didn't even care that it wasn't mini golf. I'm like, let's go out and do this, Cooper. But he tried stealing my baby. Um, <laughs> he scooped her up and I was going to let her t- let him take her. Should ask him to be the godfather. Well, I was oh. thinking like, you know, just take her and I'll have weekend visitation. She's going to w- live the life of luxury with <laughs> this man. Uh, but he was like, no, I already had my my share of children. You can take yours back. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, thanks. <laughs> Welcome to my nightmare is true on that point. <laughs> uh, such a nice man, though. Everybody says that, too. He's such a genuine, uh, kind, and caring individual, and he is. Uh, he listens to everything you say. I held up the line for 45 minutes, asking him questions about his albums that I'm probably sure that a young guy like myself coming up to, he was shocked that I knew those anyways. Uh, but really, really nice man. Uh, we come back, we're going to talk a little more about Comic-Con, and then we're going to move on to another subject, Survivor Series. I know some of you out there are going, boo, already. Oh, oh I can God. see the hatred in Slappy's face, oh. uh, but I enjoyed it, and I'm going to tell you why in a little bit. So here we are. Uh, before we go down to a song, we're going to have a little commercial information for you. Uh, we are looking for donations, examples, gift cards to local restaurants, gift baskets, or anything that you would like to donate towards us for our Toys for Tots event, which is coming up December 3rd. Uh, If you wish to donate anything to us, my address is 26. I'm not giving you that on air. (laughs) No, you're not. I'm not that stupid. But if you wish to donate something to us, uh, please uh, look us up on Facebook, Albert H. Berger. Send me (laughs) a message. Or you could even send something to RhodeIslandFreeRadio.org. And they will send it to the correct place. If it's a restaurant gift certificate, it, it might not make the cut. Right. Exactly. It might stop at us. <laughs> Any donations, good donations, and everything uh, money-wise and toys-wise, 100% goes back to Toys for Tots. Now, granted, this would be the third year that the Marines haven't even bothered with us, and they, they stiff us. Uh, but we still find a way of getting the toys to Cardi's. because they kept them. trying to recruit you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and I kept telling them, no, like, you've got enough clowns in the military. You don't need me. All right, so we're going to go down to a song. And uh, if you don't know this one, you definitely have no computer skills. And I don't think that's anybody in this room. It's called P-P-A-P, Pen Pineapple Pen. It is what it is. Listen to it, ladies and gentlemen. Pico, 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 talo, pico. P-P-A-P Pineapple, 
a Pope. Yeah, I bet you no one's heard the actual <laughs> extended version of that. They usually only hear the first uh, 50 seconds, Tony. Uh, what did you think of that song, Slappy? I don't know if I want a pineapple Pika. or an apple. <laughs> oh, I just heard a Pika in the background. <laughs> that goes out for all you guys out there playing Pokemon Go. Hey, no, you know what? I'm a gamer, too. Play it. Just play it safe, you know? Don't be walking on the side of roads or over docks into the water. <laughs> uh, that's the last thing someone wants to do Christmas Eve is bury your ass because you are playing some stupid Pokemon Go game. Not, not the best way to go. No. Not that there's any good way to go, but that's probably the worst. Now, down in Wickford, we have a Pokemon that actually identifies as being down in the water. And I've seen kids down on the docks, like, reaching over with their phones, getting closer and closer. I mean, you know it's only a matter of time. <laughs> well, yeah, there's, there's pictures up on YouTube of people actually chasing the Pokemon and walking off the docks <laughs> into the water. This is a thing. Uh, we're just telling you out there to be safe. Now, let's go back to Comic-Con a little bit and talk about the goods. And, uh, yeah, it was actually all good for me. I mean, I know a lot of people out there are saying, oh, it sucked, the traffic, everything was overpriced. Not everything was overpriced. If you came to my booth, you could have had five dollars. Would have bought you one of our DVDs at endless laughs. And unlike some of those twenty dollars DVDs that, when you get them home, they don't work. <laughs> Mr. Jones, you learned that lesson, yeah, didn't you? Quite a few times up at Rock and Shock. You know, some really obscure stuff. Oh, they have it on DVD. I'll actually buy it, get it home. Nothing, just a blank DVD. Doesn't wow. work. You were screwed because they don't go back and check their DVDs to make sure they work. That's the biggest thing when you're out there making your own. You got to check them. Uh, you can't be that lazy guy. Now, all that said, we met some really cool characters. Uh, I met the one and only Vandal Savage, who took my picture, and it ended up on his Instagram, nice. Uh, nice. which was really cool. Uh, met the dude that played the Penguin. I'm sorry, I don't remember all their names. And the guy that played Alfred uh, from Gotham. A lot, of, a lot of the DC characters I met because they were over in the same building as me. Uh, one of the S.H.I.E.L.D. guys came over and uh, was interested in what we were doing. I gave him the spiel, and he said, yeah, that's good. Uh, you know, it's good to see that cable access has still got a stronghold because so many people are so damn lazy right now that yeah. they don't want to get up and start their own project or do something to help the community out, which we started just as a television show. And then, you know, Tony, myself, and a couple other folks said, well, why don't we just try to take this and help the community out with this a little further? Do a couple you know, events that normal people won't show up to, but the abnormal show up that wouldn't normally donate are donating and getting off the couch. And that's all a good thing. And he, he just noticed that, and that felt good to hear someone say that. To hear my role model, Alice Cooper Slappy, tell me, congratulated on my new career. I was like, well, this isn't a new career, but since you're <laughs> congratulating me, I'm going to take that and run with it. Exactly. I mean, the, the man himself congratulated me and said he was going to be watching my DVDs on the airplane as he's flying home. Now, he probably got home and said, burn these immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and like the, the deepest Smithers voice, burn these immediately. He watched him and said, this guy has a kid? <laughs> yeah. Uh, How did he do it? <laughs> maybe I should have taken the kid from him. <laughs> Would have been safer. Uh, yeah, so... It, he was really cool. Um, I don't know too many celebrities that were standoffish at this one. Uh, even the wrestlers. I mean, they were all pretty cool. Even Billy Gunn. I know he gets a, you know, the, the wrong end of the stick because he doesn't get along with, well with the wrestlers. <laughs> he did really well with the fans hanging out with him and everything. Jake the Snake looked really good. He yeah. was still messed up in the head, though. I don't think anything's going to change that. Uh, he even remembers smashing my fingers with the 2 by 4 <laughs> Wow. Considering the condition he was in a few years ago, I mean, he looked great. Yeah, and he even threatened to smash me again with that 2 by 4 if he <laughs> had it. I would have paid to see that. I know you would have. <laughs> I would have paid to have him slap you. <laughs> wow. And you deserved it after that one. Imagine getting slapped by Jake the Snake. You're not yeah. coming conscious after that. Uh, that's a slapping, all right. So with that said, we're talking about wrestling. Uh, we're going to go down to a song, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to do a good point to point, a uh, good amount on the actual Survivor Series, which just came out, which when I was a kid, when I was a kid in my days, Back in my day. Survivor Series actually fell on or around Thanksgiving Day. It was a Thanksgiving tradition. Yeah. So it was close to that this year, just not really there. So let's go down. Uh, this is a Harp Twins. Also, I got this off YouTube. 
oh, if you get the chance to watch these young ladies play the harp, not only are they musically talented, but they are nice for the eyes. So let's go down to the Harp Twins, Guns N' Roses, Sweet Child of Mine, here on Chuckles Crypt, Rhode Island Free Radio, and we'll come back with a little commercial info for you. Welcome back to Chuckles Crypt, and that was the Harp Twins, and I'll have some more of that next time we come up. Uh, very uh, calm music for you to sit there and listen to while you're reading your comic books. That's the point of today. Today is to be mindful of your area, pick up your comic book, listen to our show, space out, have fun with it. That's what we're all about. Uh, when next time we come, we, we're going to talk heavier on the Ninja Turtles crossover between Batman and... Uh, the Ninja Turtles. We're going to talk about the whole series, including the part two that's just sp- spiked off. Um, but before that, uh, we go any further. Uh, Slappy, we got some important information for the, the listeners out here. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to bring it to their attention that uh, one of our sponsors, uh, Greenwich Cove Meadery, at I do believe it's 579 Washington Street in Coventry, Rhode Island, 02816. They're um, uh, one of our sponsors. Um, again, you can drop off toys or, uh, yeah. Yeah, they're one of our sponsors for toy collections. That's what he's trying to tell you. 
If you want to, you can go by the store, buy yourself a thing of mead, and drop off a toy. I mean, that's a win-win. Mead, toys, and he's got these cool trains in there, too. And if you guys aren't into mead, go up there and buy a bottle of honey. I mean, that stuff's really good, and it goes excellent with a thing of tea. Or you just take a dab of it, and you put it inside of your mitt. Never mind. I can't go there. <laughs> that, that, this awesome. isn't that type of... Uh, radio station exactly can't talk about that but what we can talk about is the awesomest known as survivor series and a lot of people out there are going oh no i can't believe you said uh, awesome uh, <laughs> oh stop it you enjoyed it too especially with some of those comments that were going to get us in trouble if nurse misery came in the door oh boy yeah uh but it was in, it was very enjoyable the survivor series matches like i kind of apologize and i do this often to Triple H, I didn't think this Raw SmackDown split was going to work, but to his ad- advantage, it did work very well. Especially with the fact that they did it ten years ago and it didn't work. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, now it seems to be working a little bit. Works. Equal uh, equal ratings, which is w- what surprised me. Yeah, and it worked very well on the Survivor Series split up. It's a story within a story, which has stories all surrounded. So you really can't pay attention to any of the stories because you're paying attention to is it going to be SmackDown or Raw. And, yes, uh, I'm going to spoil this for you. I would have to say Raw, hands down, won the Survivor Series competition. They retained the, the uh, Cruiserweight division title, and they won two out of the three Survivor Series bat- battles. Exactly. Yeah. So, and, and the last one was really good. Uh, Shane McMahon got... Knock the f out by <laughs> by Roman Reigns spear out of nowhere. Uh, we saw our well. I'm not a big fan of him, so I was very excited to see AJ Styles get shield bombed yeah. right through yeah. that table. I don't like him either. No, oh, seeing his face and him go down into that, I'm like, yeah, you're out of here. You're done. See ya. Yep. He's not coming back. The only one I'm really not too keen of, and you you agree with this, I'm sure everybody else will in this room, is Kevin Owens as a world champion. He's an out of shape, <laughs> no gimmicked, independent wrestler that I would Li- see in a backyard. Literally yeah, ex- no gimmick. Like what Kevin Owens wears to the ring is what I wear to bed at night. Yeah, or <laughs> you, you know, like see, a t-shirt yeah. and some shorts. <laughs> You're looking to see some guy in a Punisher shirt and the shorts showing up in a backyard wrestling federation. <laughs> Who does he? give sexual favors to to get this high on the hog i mean come on man like there's all those other talents there and you make him a champion can we put him in a tutu yeah i mean that'd be more entertaining than what he's i'm not taking away from his wrestling skills he has wrestling skills in ring in presence he does not no character no character he is born as sin the watch and it's like and he's too predictable because now he's using the same moves over and over and over. This is what everybody tore John Cena apart for, if you remember. Like, John Cena sucks. He looks like an independent wrestler. <laughs> and he's using the same moves over and over again. Well, I hate to say it, Kevin Owens is doing the same thing right now. Yep. It's the exact same thing. And with Kevin Owens, it's kind of a recycled gimmick, if you remember, actually about 10, 11 years ago, uh, Triple H and Ric Flair were best friends. And now I'm watching... Kevin Owens now, and, and you know he's a best friend, and I'm thinking, where have I seen this before? Oh, yeah, 11 years ago with Triple H and Ric Flair. They were best friends. Oh, yeah. Seen this before. It's coming around. But the, the rest of it, uh, and I'm going to say this too, the woman's Survivor Series uh. bout stole the show. Definitely did. Uh, better wrestling, better like hands-on eye coordination. Of course, there's a couple of the female wrestlers in there we do not like, <laughs> and we're not going to trash them because there's reasons we don't like them. That is not politically correct. <laughs> so we'll just keep it to that. And yes, uh, by the way, if you're going to spill hatred at me, now's the time. I did vote Trump. I'm not scared. Send me the hate mail right now. You got a protest on your front right lawn? Now? Oh, I hope so. Try burning a flag on my front lawn and see how far that gets you. Oh, right yeah. Let's do yeah, it. Come on. Yeah, Come you're, on. Not, you're not going to get too far with that. No. I'm going to end up in the ACI after you even light that Zippo to that ni- neon flag. <laughs> and I'll be right there with yeah, you. You'll be mummified with that stuff. That's a subject for Tony Jones' so, so I don't <laughs> want to get too far off that. Uh, what was one of your favorite matches, Slappy, for the uh, you know, Survivor Series? Besides the women's match, I know. Well, now you just took it away from me. You disappeared in the bathroom for about an <laughs> hour right after that. I couldn't find the toilet paper. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. So that's what that sticky stuff was all over the shower stall. <laughs> I tried cleaning it. So what was your favorite besides that? 
Well, I'll tell you, I'll go with the three-minute match at the end. <laughs> Brock Lesnar. Why? Because of Goldberg. You like Goldberg that much? Or you I'll like that? tell you, I like him a lot. I'd get in a ring with him, and I'd let him take me down for a million dollars. Now, be careful how you say take me down, ah, because no, someone's no. going to take that the wrong way. Okay, I apologize. I'd get in the ring, and I'd let him slam me. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that, that could be taken the wrong way, too. This is definitely going on to another television show, a radio show that would follow this. It's called The Haunted Cabaret, and we would get in trouble for which, by the way, George, feel better. We miss you around here, and I look forward to returning on the Haunted Cabaret. Uh, so y you like Goldberg, and really? I mean, that seemed like probably like the most disappointing match. I, I, I just don't have anything for Brock Lesnar. I mean, he's an over, overrated character, I believe. Um, my nephew could actually be a better... But here's the problem that stands with this, right? Brock Lesnar is the man that comes in and destroys the Undertaker's streak. Brock Lesnar is the man that comes in and kicks the living crap out of John Cena numerous times. Yeah. Brock Lesnar is the man that comes in and lays out, you know, Roman Reigns and a couple other guys like Seth Rollins. His win record is totally untouchable. And then you have some guy that hasn't been wrestling for 20 flipping years. <laughs> Old Jewish guy. Yeah, come in and destroy you in three minutes. So Brock Lesnar, if you said this was your idea, shame on you, because now you just made Undertaker look like a pile of crap. The best thing of that match was the look on Brock Lesnar's face like, duh. <laughs> I loved it. Now, the only time I did enjoy watching Brock Lesnar get beat was Eddie Guerrero. Anybody remember that when he got the world title? Uh, yes, I believe so. No one, no one thought he was going to be able to do that. And when he actually pulled it off, I was that guy standing behind Eddie Guerrero. Although, I shouldn't talk poorly about the dead. Why not? I'm dead half the time anyways. <laughs> he was an asshole to meet live. He was one of the biggest jerks that I have ever met outside the wrestling world. Right next to Crash Holly. And uh, rest his soul, too. Wow, Both yeah. the Hollies. Yeah. Yeah. Both the Hollies were jerks, and so wasn't uh, Eddie Guerrero. Karma got you. Got all three of you, didn't it? One's brain dead, and the other, one, the other two are dead. So, <laughs> oh, man, I'm an ass. I really am. <laughs> Sounds like me. So, and one of them slept with China. Yeah. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> oh, sloppy seconds from one, two, three, kid. We can't be talking about that stuff. No, we can not. So no. let's, let's go do a little commercial here, and then we'll go down to some music. Uh, another one of our sponsors, uh, I would be uh, amiss if I forgot to say them, is Reality A Gamings. Uh, they're off 231 Washington Street, West Warwick, Rhode Island. 02893. See, you see the pattern here. Most of the people I drop the boxes off to are off Washington Street because I can walk to those places if my car breaks down. And I'm smart. My car may be bad, but I'm smart. Or if you have too much at your stop at uh, Greenwich Cove Meadery, instead of driving to the next place, you can yeah, uh, just start walking down exactly. there. Now, exactly. Now, if you guys haven't gone to this game store, do. Uh, my friend Herbie Hicks and Joe, they both run this uh, store. Uh, he's got his own board game and I'd have to say 100% of the games that when they're doing them, the gaming night, it's free. Uh, and their video games and everything, they are well af more affordable than most places. And, and I hear when you go in there, they actually wait on you. Unlike yeah. some game shops you go in where you're trying to buy something and dudes are playing games. You just yeah, wow. yeah, he will stop and he'll come wait on you. And then, of course, he'll go right back to the game <laughs> afterwards. But he will stop. And they, for the most part, I, I wasn't wasn't too happy with the the D and D crowd that I went down there to try to play, and I was only ten minutes late, and I got told you were too late. No, set in the back corner and watch us. <laughs> I, I, how the heck am I going to learn the game? Wow. Setting in a back corner and watching you, and I wasn't even in clown gear, so you couldn't have been a clownist. I was wearing a lot of coverall then. That's awesome. You wonder why I hate Dungeons and Dragons because every time I've done this, I've had a poor experience. Either someone's killed me within five seconds, or they don't want to let me into their crowd. Like, or they just change up the rules as they go. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. You go buy this $30 book, and then they change the rules and kill your character in five seconds because they don't like you. <laughs> Thank God I'm not a gamer. You are, too. You're <laughs> a gamer time. of old games, the old 8 bits. Time. Yeah. Actually, that ties right into Survivor Series because that match was largely built up, predicated on the video game. I remember yeah. when... Uh, You're right. They did build it up off the game so you can reenact re it today. Yeah. Yeah. I remember watching Survivor Series in black and white. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> 
Well, that's because you were too poor to get a color television like <laughs> yeah, that myself. that was only two years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had a nice black and white, too. You know you're old when you remember your television had the UHC thing oh. or the UVF logos on the, on the spin dial. That thing in the back with the two forks you had to screw in there. Yeah, to play your video game machine oh, system. Brutal. I mean, that, if you didn't know how to hook up your game systems then, you were screwed. We, didn't, the, we didn't have any geek squads coming out. I think those us. little hookups kept uh, Radio Shack in business for towards the end there. It's the only place you could get them. Aluminum yeah. foil on the antennas. Yep. Yep. Oh, man, oh, that, yeah. those are the that, days. That was great. You could only get Fox, which had the best lineup of cartoons after school. Oh, my The God. Disney lineup. Oh, I love that stuff. And, oh. you know, in, in true local Rhode Island form, as a kid, I was a basement dweller, so I had to take that foil and bunch it up and roll it up up on the rabbit ears all the way out the window to get any channels in the basement. And hope your dog didn't chew on them on the way out there. I loved your dog, but that thing was stupid. Uh, literally, it ate its own poop. Not a guard dog. No, no, definitely not. We got a situation. Can, can I tell this on radio? Yeah. About yeah. a little while back, and it's it's – it's Tony Jones and myself, so forgetting our keys is something that we do quite often. So I was a much more slender clown <laughs> back then. And Tony goes, I need you to go in through my basement window to get in. So I'm like, okay. Oh God. So he opens up the basement window, and I go in. And who's sitting down at the bottom of the window but Murphy, his little dog, uh, little pug mix, right? Yeah, yeah. He doesn't bark at me. He licks my face, and he's running to the stairs because he needs help getting up the stairs. <laughs> I swear he probably would have shown me where the jewelry and money is if I just <laughs> fed him. Like, hey, I don't care about these guys. Just feed me. I don't care. The most loving dog in the world he was, but he was, he was stupid. Rest his soul. What a, what a good puppy. Uh, so we got off track, and we were talking <laughs> about reality gaming. So I'm sorry it went that way, guys. But great store. Please support them. Support local, especially coming up this, uh, this Saturday, which yeah. is uh, Saturday Support Local Stores. I highly uh, recommend to support Greenwich Cove Meadery, uh, Reality Games, Rhode Island Free Radio.org. Support us. Listen to the radio show. Anything local, stay there. Stay out of the Walmarts for the day. They, they, can, they, they won't hurt. Trust me. <laughs> they won't hurt at all if you're not in there. The employees will appreciate the little break you give them. Uh, so let's go down uh, to uh, probably one of my all-time favorite uh, – well, he's heard of. But one of my all-time favorite clowns that is a musician <laughs> and not ICP, so don't get too excited out voice. there. Yes, Puddle's Pit Pity Party here on Chuckles Clip, Rhode Island Free Radio, Boulevard of Broken Dreams. I walk along the streets of sorrow, the Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Where Shigalo and Shigalette can take a kiss without regret So they forget their broken scheme The joy you find here you will borrow You cannot keep it long, it seems And Shigalo and Shigalette wake up to find their eyes are wet With tears that tell of broken dreams But here is where you'll always find me Always walking up and down But I left my soul behind me In that old cathedral town That joy you find here you will borrow You cannot keep it long it seems And Shigalo and Shigalette Can sing a song and dance along The Boulevard of Broken Dreams You'll always find me Always walking up and down But I left my soul behind me In that old cathedral town That joy you find here You will borrow 
You cannot keep it long, it seems And Gigolo and Gigolette Can sing a song and dance along The Boulevard of Broken Dreams. I love Puddle's Pity Party. They, that guy is excellent. If you get the chance to catch him, do so. He comes up to Rhode Island a couple times, Massachusetts. He tours pretty much. Got some uh, fine nationally. backup dancers. Oh, uh, he does. Uh, he, he does a really good cover of, uh, what's that song that, that uh, you guys like? Uh, with the chick there. I don't know. Oh, Royals. Royals, yes. So it's a really yeah. good cover of the Royals song there. Very good. Now, we're going to come back, and we're going to talk a little about the Turtles before uh, we, we wrap things up with a little Judas Priest. Yeah, I'm going to wrap things up with some Judas Priest well, after that relaxing <laughs> moment that you guys had. I'm going to stir things all up and remind you that you live in America, land at the free home of hell. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm your one and only jester to lead you through this pit of fire into the holidays of home. Yes, you can quote that. Uh, so we're going to talk about the turtles. Now, who's not a fan of the turtles in this room? Anybody? No? I just got me a 1980s turtle pizza thrower. Yes, that thing is awesome. And did that thing put out eyes? <laughs> I, had a, I had a pet turtle. Did you paint a little Michael Ant? No, that's before your time. That, well, yeah. you, you would have probably made like the turtles in the hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's no, it's all right. I mean, you could get into them now. They're really cool. I mean, I know some. I mean, this is one of those age ga- gap things that it really is. You got kids in there that are four year olds to people that are my age that love it and they can sit there and nerd out and talk yeah. about it. Uh, and, and if you haven't picked it up, do so now because this is why I'm telling you to pick this up. Uh, Turtles and Batman crossover. I'm going to talk about it a lot next week or next time I come to the airwaves. Uh, so make sure you pick that up. Read the books. There's all, if you're a HeroClick fan too, there's also Reinsurgence of Turtle HeroClick, which is kind of like Warhammer, but with the Ninja Turtles. I mean, that's, that's flipping awesome. I wish I had a board game like that when I was a kid. We had this cheesy board game that my dog ate the pieces and then <laughs> puked it all over afterwards. There was no save in that game. Nothing. Did you still use the pieces after the dog uh, passed no. them? <laughs> yeah, and you know something? I think one of the reasons he ate it is they, the little pizza parts, actually, if you scratched them, smelled like oh, pizza. Yeah. So he probably said, oh, boy, pizza-flavored cardboard, and then started eating it. And it's, it's kind of like the story where uh, I bought a whole box of Garbage Pail Kids from this place called Rocky Hill Flea Market. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, these Garbage Pail Kids car- or cards were probably about eight years old at the time. I said, oh, boy, free gum. Oh, Opened boy. up the wrapper, put it in. I think I chipped my first tooth, and then the gum tasted like the cards. <laughs> I started <laughs> spitting it everywhere. <laughs> and that's probably what my dog felt like when she, she ate the, uh, the cardboard pizza pieces there. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, these are gross. How dare you? Why would you eat these, Dad? I don't eat those. I was eating the Ninja Turtles. Those were those were full of rubber fibers. And that old school gum in the cards had all that oh. chalk on it. It oh. was all white. Baby powder. <laughs> yeah, what was ah. that? I mean, ah. what? I think it was some kind of preservative. So today you could eat the gum out of cards that were actually, 20 years ago. Actually, I think it was sugar. No way. Sugar don't taste Powdered like sugar. shit. sugar, yes. <laughs> if Probably sugar anthrax. tastes like shit, it's the pink <laughs> stuff that's on the uh, the equal or whatever the hell that stuff is. That is horrible, <laughs> horrible stuff. Whoever puts equal in their coffee, man, oh. I'm sorry for you because you can't have the real thing. Brutal. I really am. Yeah. So uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a couple things before we go down to some uh, the last part of the show. Uh First of all, I'd like to say happy birthday to my daughter because uh, she's going to be turning three months old on the 26th. Wow. Yeah, three months. And that first song did go out to her. So if you missed it, go back. Go she back looked to, like she was having fun at Comic-Con. She, she was. Go Hold back up. to RhodeIslandFreeRadio.org. Go on old shows because in about five minutes, this will be an old show. <laughs> and click on uh, Vita, the seventh element. That's her song. I dedicated it to her. And... Um, I was told to give a shout out to someone called Ashley Planner. I think I heard her feelings talking about Glenn turning into Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> if I had the Smashing Pumpkin CD and Wanna the song, I would bring that up right now for you, hon, and dedicate it to you. But since I can't, I'll say no. He didn't look like a Smashing Pumpkin. He kind of looked like a spaghetti squash after you drained it and pulled all the guts out of the inside of it. 
That's kind of what he looked Happy like. Happy Thanksgiving, folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that as you're preparing your meal on Wednesday night. <laughs> We're going to have a new uh, dish at a Chinese restaurant. I'm going to ask him that it's going to be called Gwen Fried Rice. Gwen. <laughs> you like Gwen Fried Rice? You like Gwen Fried Rice? Yes. Comes with extra meatball. Look like eye. Oh, yeah. It uh, blink at you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the fish eye. That fish. Oh, fish oh, eye. Fish too. So uh, <laughs> before we go down to some Judas Priest, uh, remember, turn into Chuckles Crypt. Uh, if you haven't already been listening to us, getting carried away and excited, we'll be back in about uh, another week from now, and we'll bring you the, t- the turtles. So that gives you almost, what, two weeks, Tony, to read up on the books? Yeah, yeah. And they're not very hard to find, so go out there. That, that's you too, Slappy. I'm giving you some homework. Go find those books and read them. I fall asleep when I read. Well, then you're on the wrong radio show. You better go <laughs> oh, find no, no, something no, else. No, no, no. Uh, so you get to go... Uh, Pick them up, read those books, check it out. Uh, of course, Walking Dead coming out Sunday. Let's see what's going on with them. That's turning out to be a, a hell of a show as it is, uh, if it wasn't already. But uh, let's uh, we'll go out to some Judas Priest after I tell you about our good friends from Rubber Chicken off 15 North Main Street, Bellingham, Mass, 02019. Uh, they are probably the coolest comic shop you guys will come into contact with. They're very kind. They're helping us out with comics and whatnot to read for the show. And uh, it's worth the ride and even a bus trip to go up there and check them out. Yes, it's in Massachusetts. But if you're in Mass, it's no problem. If you're in Rhode Island, yes, you're going to have to you're going to have to come across the bridge trolls. It's going to happen. I wish there was a comic book shop like that in Rhode Island. My local comic book shop uh, sucks. Yeah, he's he's a nice guy, but he has really weird hours and he doesn't want to like do anything. Yeah. He doesn't want to partake in the free comic day, which I have another friend up in Central Falls that's starting a comic shop. He's probably listening to me right now. And uh, one of the things I told him, I said, it's suicide if you decide to open up a comic shop and not partake in free comic day. Free comic day, yes, you're giving away free comics, but you make 10 times yeah. more that. Free traffic. Uh, for people buying comics from you. Exactly. You know, put them on discount. Don't put them on the top dollar. Put them out on the curb and say 25 cents comics. That 25 cents adds up. Trust me, I've done it. Before I've known it, I've looked down at the stack that's a 25 cent stack, and it's a $75 <laughs> deal for that comic guy. And, and, they, and they were all little Lulus. Yeah, and I still got to go buy cardboard and plastic now, and probably another box. So here's another $35 because us comic nerds like to make sure our comics are very pristine and very protected. Uh, no hard feelings out there, Ashley. It's just a zombie movie. Keep that in mind. There's no such thing <laughs> as a happy ending when it comes to a zombie I flick. I hope not. So do not get attached to the characters. If you want a happy f- ending, go watch this movie called Warm Blood. That has a happy ending, and that's a zombie flick. Very good one too. We're gonna go. With, uh, we're gonna head out with a little Judas Priest here on Chuckles Crypt or Island Free Radio dot org. Please tune in next time when we talk about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs>